So we got creeping death. There it goes. They're hurting. They're hurting. Hostile radio intercepted. We're under attack. It might be a diversion. So be ready. What's up, agents? How y'all doing? Hope everybody's hanging in there, being as safe as you guys need to be. Today, we are going to again be getting into a comprehensive guide. So I first off want to give a shout out to MMA Knowledge, who's been sticking with the channel for a while and comes through with a lot of great comments and ideas, things to help build, ideas for new builds. So MMA Knowledge, thank you, man. Appreciate it. So he had hit me up recently about doing a bleed build and upon getting into it, I realized that the best way to do justice was to basically get into a general comprehensive status effects guide. There's two sides of it. There's the damaging status effects like your burn and your bleed to a lesser extent, the shock. Then there's the actual support type uh, effects like blind, riot foam, disrupt. 
Then there's things like the pulse that when used in the right environment can help with situational awareness, but when combined with the right gear can actually provide bonus damage to yourself and the team. All right, so before jumping any further on, hopefully if you guys learn something new or find this entertaining, you guys will smash that like button for me. Hopefully by the end of this, I will have earned your guys' subscription. Best thing you can do to help my channel is to share this video. And please leave comments for anything you see here that you would do differently, anything you like, and anything you'd like us to bring you in the future. All right, without further ado, let's get into the status effects. All right, guys, so as we said, we're going to break this down into two components. The main one's going to be the true damage effects, and then there's going to be the others. And to start out with, what we're going to talk about is the sort of things you're going to be looking for. So for damage effects, you're going to be looking for both skill damage and status effects, and then you're going to be looking to prolong your duration as long as possible. For the effects that do not cause damage, you're going to be looking for status effects, duration, and then haste to make sure that you have those support skills up as often as possible. All right, so as far as the specialization, unless we're using the artillery turret for the mortars, which requires us to use the demolitionist, we're gonna be using the technician. This will give us a myriad of benefits to include the amp for the plus one skill tier, which will allow us to use an armor or weapon core on one of our pieces of gear, still maintain skill tier six. You have the Faraday field when you have a deployed skill around. You and your allies will not be disrupted nor shocked. You get the added benefit of the overclocked CPU, which will give you 10% additional skill damage. This is directly to the damage of the skills, not the status effects, but is, is still a buff. You get the dismantling will give us a little bit bonus damage to non-organics, things like the drones, the warhounds, uh, shields, barricades, things like that. And lastly, it also gives us the Artificer Hive, which can be helped to buff one of our skills if we're using it. And if you're in a team, you can use your Artificer to buff the entire team. The Artificer is also a great way of deploying your Faraday field. All right, so next let's talk about the weapons. Of course, like always, you want to use the weapons that fit your play style the best. And the great thing about this particular build style is you're looking for one weapon talent above all else, and that's perpetuation. When you get a headshot, perpetuation will tack on a 50% damage bonus to your status effects. This is only additive, it's not a multiplier, but it is the most substantial buff that you will get. In addition, it adds 50% duration. In most of these cases, we're looking at getting maybe 30 to 40% skill duration. So in almost every case, you would be more than doubling the duration of your skill this way. Why this is important is because it means you can put it on basically any weapon. The only difference between perpetuation and perfect perpetuation coming on the everlasting gaze is the perfect perpetuation lowers the cooldown from 20 seconds to 16 seconds, which is a buff but it's not too important overall, especially since once you proc perpetuation, you will then swap over to another weapon. So let's talk about other weapons you may choose to use. Now, these are just my opinion, but right under perpetuation comes the Scorpio. This is something that can debuff the enemy, can shock the enemy, you can add a myriad of status effects, and when fully stacked, they'll take 20% more damage from all sources. So the Scorpio can be used to great effect. Now, if you want a quick damage buff, you could go with something like the test subject or any weapon with the regular in sync to either proc a 30 or 40% bonus damage to your weapons and your skill damage. And then lastly in this category, I would consider any of the weapons that provide a buff to weapon damage based on the type of status effect. You got, you know, ignited or perfect ignited with the pyromaniac. You have the darkness with the eyeless or perfect eyeless. You know, there's a myriad of different weapon perks that you could be using. So you could use Sadist uh, for the bleed, but you could use the Carnage for the extra weapon damage. So these would be my last pick as they don't seem to add as much as the other versions. But depending on the weapons that you have and your play style, you may decide to choose one of those. Now lastly, we'll talk about weapons with secondary perks. You could either use this in your secondary weapon slot or on your sidearm. These include three perks. The one is vindictive, since you will be applying status effects all the time, you kill a status affected enemy. The standard vindictive will buff the crit hit chance, crit hit damage by 15% for the team. 
And the Perfin Vindictive from the Grudge would buff the entire team's crit hit chance, crit hit damage by 18%. Alternatively, you may want to go with the Sledgehammer, which can provide the team with bonus damage to armor and afflicts the enemy with negative movement speed. And lastly, you may want to go with something like Future Perfect to be able to proc an overcharge if you're able to take down a wounded enemy that's almost dead. And this will give you some bonus skill damage, a little bit of bonus status effect damage, as well as oftentimes making a skill recharge a bit faster. One last thing to note, if you guys do not mind using a pistol as your primary weapon, you could always go with additional weapon or armor core, use a card TDI custom with perpetuation on it, and that would be a pretty cool choice and may work well with things like Claws Out, Wyvern Holster that will give you melee damage as well as that extra 9% pistol damage. All right, guys, now let's talk about the gear and brand sets. Before getting into the brand sets, as that will get you the most damage, the longest burn and stuff, that's not always the most practical way to play, and a lot of you guys will choose to use the Eclipse Protocol gear set. The two-piece will net you 15% status effect damage. Three pieces will get you 15% skill haste, as well as 30% hazard protection. The big one's the four-piece indirect transmission, and when you kill a status-affected enemy, it will spread that status effect to all enemies within 10 meters. This can be greatly enhanced with the chest talent proliferation, which will increase the radius from 10 meters to 15 meters, which turns out to be an actual 67% increase in the area of effect, as well as refreshing 75% of the duration instead of the standard 50%. One thing I will quickly note is there is the ongoing directive which will cause bleed. It will give hollow point bullets to your team members and this can be a great build. The reason I'm not focusing on ongoing directive despite it being a bleed based build is because really you have to have a weapon DPS. You're, you want all weapon cores to really get the best bang for the buck out of the ongoing directive. We did a full skill build version and it just was nowhere near as effective as we would want it to be. Try it out if you want, but for purposes of a full-on status effect build, it's, it's just it's not going to work the way we need it to. The one cool thing about it is it does double bleed damage, but as we'll get into in a bit, even doubling bleed damage does not help it to keep up with burn by the slightest. All right, now let's talk about the brand sets because this is what will yield you the most damage. The first one we'll talk about is Empress International. You can run three pieces of Empress International and both in skill damage builds and status effects builds, this tends to be one of the best things you can do. The 10% skill health is okay, but the second piece gives us 10% skill damage. The third piece gives us 10% skill efficiency. So this will buff your skill damage this will buff your status effects, this will buff the duration, this will buff the cooldown. This basically buffs everything that has to do with skills. Second, you could run up to three pieces of Wyvernware. The first piece will give us the skill damage, the second piece will give us the status effects, the third piece will give us the skill duration. Next, we have the Golden Gear. The first piece will give us the status effects. If for some reason you want to run a second piece or you're running the Ninja Bike, that will give you access to that 1% armor regen per second, which is great for actual gameplay and helping with your survivability. Lastly, we'll throw another one in here that would only really be taken into account if you're using the Ninja Bike. We can throw in the idea of using the Haunted U two-piece. The first piece will give us the skill haste. The second piece will net us some skill damage. Note that this does not do a whole lot overall for status effects builds. And the actual non-damage status effects, this will do pretty much nothing for, other than giving you that little bit of skill haste. Now, as far as the attributes on your gear, your minor attributes, the main one you're looking for, of course, is status effects, followed directly after by skill damage. Now, if you're not using the skill damage version, then, of course, you're going to admit this. After skill damage, we would be looking for duration. After duration, you'll be looking for additional skill haste. And after that, armor regen per second can be effective, but is not mandatory. Now let's talk about the chest talents that we could have. So of course, the thing that's gonna net you the biggest bang for the buck 
no doubt is going to be glass cannon. If this will augment all of your damage by a 25% multiplier at the cost of you taking 50% damage additional from every single source. Now after glass cannon is the skilled and the perfectly skilled. And the great thing about perfectly skilled because it's an Empress International Caesar's Guard named chess piece, it means it does contribute to one of the brand sets we're looking for. The standard skilled and any skill kill has a 25% chance to reset your skills. The perfect skilled ups that to 30%. Now a lesser option would be to choose the trauma. This will blind the enemy with a headshot or cause the enemy to bleed with a body shot. It's a way of providing two status effects. Unfortunately, these status effects are rather weak and they are on a 30 second cooldown. We now have the new HB brand set which will give us the perfect trauma and this reduces the cooldown by 10 seconds to only 20 seconds. However, it just does not give enough bang for the buck to make it worth it and that particular brand set does not do anything to buff a status effect build. So we're gonna pass on the perfect trauma and I do recommend passing on trauma overall. Once again, I will mention the proliferation talent from the Eclipse Protocol chess piece, which is one of the best buffs you can get overall. And if you are using the Eclipse Protocol, I would use that over glass cannon even. Now when we talk about the backpack talents, of course there's Combined Arms and Perfect Combined Arms. Perfect Combined Arms requires Haunted You, and unfortunately, no matter how we stack it out, that will end up ultimately taking away damage. But the Standard Combined Arms does give us a 25% buff that we can activate almost instantly. So Combined Arms is a nice talent. The next talent you may consider would be Creeping Death, and this on kill will spread that status effect to all enemies within eight meters. Now, much like the perfect trauma, there is a new perfect creeping death, which is also that HP gear set, and again has the same issues. It buffs the radius to 10 meters, and it reduces the cooldown a little bit, but the problem is, is this brand set doesn't do anything to actually buff the status effects, so it would be an ultimate net loss for us. So we are not going to consider perfect creeping death in the equation. Lastly, for the backpack talents, there's an inferior perk we could use, Wicked, and this will cause you to do bonus weapon damage to status affected enemies. Uh, unfortunately, that takes away a talent that could otherwise help to buff the status effect damage or the spread of those status effects. All right, now we're just gonna quickly go over some name gear that you may want to try to incorporate in. First of all, you got the chill out mask. If you find a chill out mask that rolled natively with status effects on it, you could then re-roll the armor into skill tier. You could slap two duration mods on there. You get the 5% bonus armor from the Gila. And this might be an interesting way to play. Ultimately, compared to the best builds, it would be a net loss overall. But while you're building your status effect build, if you happen to have this piece, it could be a lot of fun. And the idea of just extending the duration of all of your skills could be pretty fun too. We've already covered the force multiplier, and again, there's certain situations where this could work while you're gearing, but full end game, best builds, this will be out of the equation. But it is the highest damage buff that you can get on a backpack is through the force multiplier. We've already mentioned the Caesar Guard with its perfect skilled. This is great in certain builds, and if you don't like the liability of glass cannon, this would be the next thing I would choose if we're not using Eclipse Protocol. I did briefly touch on the Claws Out Wyvern Wear Holster. This will give you, in addition to the Wyvern brand set uh, bonuses, this will give you that 9% pistol damage as well as 500% melee damage. And this is more of a just kind of looks cool to have this name piece in slot, but will work with your build if you have the right pieces to slot around it. Picar's Holster is also an interesting one. This is where you have a 50% weapon damage as a minor attribute. It does come with Armor Core. And if you happen to have one that comes natively with status effects, you could re-roll that armor into skill tier, and then you'd have a status effect piece that instead of a little bit of bonus skill damage, you would get that 15% weapon damage. So that could work good in your build depending on your play style. Lastly, we'll mention the 
Emperor's Guard, and I did not mention Murakami before because it doesn't slot in very well, but if you have the Emperor's Guard, you can get that 20% extra duration going this route, as well as having that 1% armor regen. This would be comparable to running a second piece of Golden Gear. Three other name pieces I'll quickly mention, two of which we've briefly covered. First of all, there's the Courier Backpack with the perfect Creeping Death. However, it doesn't slot in well because the brand set bonus doesn't help us. We got the Cherished Chess piece with the perfect trauma, same issue. And then there's the setup backpack with the perfect opportunistic. And this can help to buff your damage. However, this is Badger Tough, so it gives us 10% shotgun damage, which does not add directly to the status effect build. Should be noted that this can be used to good effect if you like using the Scorpio. And you may choose to do this even if it does bring down your status effect damage a bit. All right, let's talk about the exotics that we could use in a status effect build. Now, one that's interesting can be used with any version of the build is the vial, because you can use the vial mask with any of the non-damage status effect builds to actually add damage to that. So that's something to consider for you guys if you like using the vial mask. Uh, this is one where, you know, you, we don't have any real solid way of buffing our explosive damage in this build. But, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to add damage to something that otherwise shouldn't be doing damage. Next, we got the Ninja Bike. This would probably be the best exotic to use in any configuration because ultimately we get the best bang for the buck with brand sets. And while having all six pieces be brand set, the and I'll go over the best in a slot in a minute here, while you're gearing up, the Ninja Bike is almost as good as the full-blown best-in-slot build uh, with a lot of variability, viability, and ways that you can mix and match parts. And so if you can get your Ninja Bike early on, that can be one of the best ways to navigate doing a status effect build. I highly recommend checking out the Ninja Bike for that. Now, of course, we have the Memento, which sucks right in the beginning, and ramps up pretty quickly especially if you're solo the memento is is great um there's plenty i've done plenty of videos on this everybody knows about the memento but it gives you all sorts of attributes it just takes a while to ramp up that damage that healing and everything else now there's ridgeway's pride and ridgeway's is an interesting one because this is one of the ways that you can proc bleed to enemies within a short radius around you and get healing back from the amount of enemies that are bleeding. This is another reason why trauma on the chest piece is basically worthless. If you're going to do that, why not just run with Ridgeways and everything you shoot will start bleeding and you'll heal and there's no cooldown. Now there's a lot better things you could be using because the bleed is pretty weak. It's pretty anemic. But if you happen to have Ridgeways earlier on, you may want to consider this. And lastly, we have the Imperial Dynasty holster with the Dragon's Glare perk. And every 35 seconds, it will catch the enemies on fire. And with the Creeping Death backpack, you can get it to spread and instantly get a group of enemies on fire. If you're able to kill one of them, you can spread that fire even further if you're using the Eclipse protocol. Um, overall, this was one of my favorites back in the day, but it started to fall out of favor. But again, if it's one of your first exotics, for a status effects build, it can be used to pretty good effect. All right, guys, so now we're getting to the meat and potatoes. What are the status effects? How do we get them? And the primary source of that is going to be the skills. So we're gonna break it down into three categories. We're gonna first talk about the bleed, we'll then talk about burn, and then we'll talk about the other status effects. So for bleed, there's four skills that we have to basically proc our bleed in addition to the Trauma and the Ridgeway's Pride. So the first one is our Explosive Seeker Mine. And we were able to net a bleed of up to 196,000. I don't have, my expertise level I believe is, is around 10% with my Explosive Mine. So we still have a little bit more damage we can get out of it. But expect to see just around 200,000 K bleed with the Explosive Seeker. We then have the mortar turret, and with the right build, we were at about 165k bleed. There's then the stinger hive, which is one of the mainstays, and that's basically what I'm going to be using as my offensive and defensive weapon, as well as something to cause that bleed. 
Stinger Hive, we were seeing about 168,000 bleed. So that's pretty good. And a lot of the background gameplay that's been happening, of course, is gonna be with the Stinger Hive because it's really, really easy to use. And lastly, for the skills, we got the Shrapnel Trap, which is actually pretty darn hard to get the uh, damage of the bleed. It turned out to only be about 95,000. That's super low. Why did that not matter? Well, because the shrapnel traps basically end up killing everything. Unless it's a big juggernaut or one of the warhounds, whatever steps on your trap is most likely going to die. All right, moving on to our burn. Now, we already talked about the Imperial Dynasty and how that will, by getting close to the enemy and them seeing you, Dragon's Glare will start the burn. That's a fairly anemic burn. What we're going to talk about now is some pretty powerful burns. In fact, the first one I'm going to mention is the most powerful, and that's the burn sticky bomb. Now, with very little effort, we can get well over a million damage per tick with the burn sticky bomb. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Without the next thing I'm about to say, this already blows every other status effect out of the water. Now, the downside is, much like the bleed, not everything is susceptible to burn. The other cool part about the burn sticky bomb is if you have a long enough duration, you could fire it, it will burn, that burn will wear out, you can then explode the sticky bomb and it will reignite. So you can get two rounds of 1 million plus burns per tick from one sticky bomb. So the burn sticky bomb is the winner. It's the winner. But moving on, we also have the incinerator turret. With the incinerator turret, we were able to get just under 500,000 damage per tick from the burn. We then have the campfire starter, which I was able to get just under 750,000 per tick burn. And the last of them, the hardest to use in my opinion, is the airburst seeker mine, which we were able to get just over 850,000 burn per tick. So you guys can see when we're comparing the burn to the bleed, there's a wide margin of differentiation between the two. And the bleed, this is why I was saying, even with the ongoing directed double bleed, it cannot even begin to keep up. You got the explosive seeker mine at 200,000, we double that, that's 400,000. Well, the lowest damage that we're getting at the max was the incinerator turret at just under 500,000. So we're talking about almost a 100,000 uh, damage per tick deficit, even if we're using the ongoing directive, and we were able to get those same numbers, which we wouldn't be able to get. Those bleed numbers would go down using the ongoing directive. So I hate to say it, before moving on to the other status effects, when you have to choose between the bleed and the burn, you're gonna almost always wanna choose the burn. Here's the good news, guys, because the easiest skill to use for an actual gameplay build will be your Stinger Hive. You have your Stinger Hive for offensive and defensive damage with bleed, and then you can run your Sticky Bomb as well. So you can use both. And I think that's actually one of the best ways to go because you do not want to be left defenseless with this build, and the Stinger Hive will help to mitigate that. All right, let's quickly talk about the other skills we can get. First of all, we got the Blinder Firefly. Now, this will blind a large group of enemies for a good duration of time. The status effects and the duration of stuff will buff that. And the cool thing is, if you want to couple this with the vial, you could start doing some bonus damage to blinded enemies without actually doing any damage to them. Great. Next, we got the Riot Foam. And I'm actually, I think I'm going to do a dedicated video specifically to Riot Foam because I've never messed with it. And I want to see if I can get a build that we can perpetually perpetually stun locked enemies. That's gonna be my goal. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But the Raya Foam can be buffed by all the status effects, the duration. Of course, we buff up our haste so we get it more often. And you know, the Raya Foam, you see a lot of Raya Foam used in legendary content for exactly the reason we're talking about. You wanna stun lock enemies. Now, every single version of the Pulse, whether it's the Tactician Drone, whether it's the Jammer Pulse, everything will benefit from all the status effects not pertaining to the skill damage. And lastly, there's the EMP Sticky Bomb, and this is a very niche sort of thing, but everything we've talked about here will buff the EMP Sticky Bomb as well. 
All right, guys, so I know that this is a long video. I know we've covered a lot here. The best in slot, this is my opinion, guys. We're going to be using a fully automatic weapon with perpetuation. In my case, I do like the P416, but use whatever you want. My secondary weapon, I choose to use the mop with in sync because I like to have a method to get 10% of my health back per kill. That's the best way to do it. You can choose whatever you want in there. That's my preferred uh, su uh, secondary weapon. My sidearm, I'm gonna use a backup boomstick with sledgehammer on it, and that is so that I can proc the sledgehammer perk for myself or the teammates. To be honest, I almost never use this, but it's nice to know it's there if I do remember that it is. Uh, we're, I'm gonna be using three pieces of the Empress International. I'll be using two pieces of Wyvern. We'll be using one piece of the Golan. We will be looking for status effects on every piece. We'll be looking for skill damage on every piece. All three mods will be duration mods. I have glass cannon on the chest. We have combined arms on the backpack. I will be using the Stinger Hive. If I wanna cause bleed, I will be using the Explosive Seeker Mine. But as I alluded to just recently, the best combination I've found is the Stinger Hive combined with the Burn Sticky Bomb. That's just my opinion, but that's how I'm able to cause the most amount of damage to the most amount of enemies. The one difference you may choose to do is to swap out combined arms with Creeping Death. A secondary advantage you have is that you do not have to be popping out of cover and possibly taking damage to keep that damage bonus procced. All right, guys, we're getting towards the end. I want to thank you guys who have made it this far. I know this is a long video with a lot of information. So bleed versus burn. There are more things susceptible to burn than bleed. Burn does more damage. So in every practical sense, you would want to choose burn over bleed, with the one exception of Stinger Hide because of its full capabilities, both offensively and defensively. The best build that you can really get is going to be the, the best in slot, high end like I talked about, or running with the four pieces of Eclipse Protocol. And actually, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and link the, hopefully, hopefully right, up, right, right up there should be the build to the most recent Eclipse Protocol build. Either the four piece Eclipse or this version of the best in slot full high end build is what I would recommend running. And if you have the ninja bike for just a tiny bit less damage, you could squeeze in a lot of cool extra things like that Golan, you'll get that second piece, which is that armor regen. You could use one piece of Wyvern and you get the status effects and the skill damage. You could only have to use two pieces of Empress International to get all three benefits. This will allow you to play around, right? Because if you have the two Empress, you got the one Wyvern, and you have the one Golan, you could squeeze in, what, a Murakami for some extra uh, duration if you wanted to. But that'll give you some extra repair skill, which isn't too beneficial. You know, you could use uh, maybe the Bellstone Armory. that give you another 1% armor regen and 10% armor on kill. That might be pretty cool. You know, every time a status-affected enemy dies, you're getting 10% of your armor back. You wouldn't have to run the mop. So there's a lot of cool combinations that you can expand upon by running the Ninja Bike that don't really fall under the purview of the status effects maximizing guide, but do really help out with the fun and the viability of gameplay and just having some fun with these status effect builds. So there's probably a whole lot more that we could get into with this, but well, maybe not. I don't know. I, I feel like we've pretty much touched base on everything we need to as far as status effects, the damage side of them, the support side. So now it's to you guys. What did I forget? Was there anything I forgot to throw in here that's of super importance? Do I need to do an amended video to add to this? Hey agents, thank you so much for watching this video and making it this far in. Hopefully if you made it this far in, you guys have slapped that like button. Hopefully I've earned your subscription. Best thing you can do to help this channel is to share this video and please leave any comments you guys have about the video or anything that you guys wanna see in the future. 
You agents be as safe as you need to be out there, and I will catch you all in the dark zone. Peace out, everybody. Thank you.